The Spirit of the Lord has filled the whole world, and that which contains all things understands what is said. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the great feast of Pentecost, which is the third greatest feast in the liturgical calendar. And the bishop asks us to remind you that today is the 40th anniversary of the founding of the Diocese of Hallam. So if you keep the Diocese of Hallam and indeed Bishop Ralph particularly in your prayers today. So to prepare ourselves then to celebrate Mass, we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast Sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came round, the Apostles had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven, and at this sound they all assembled, assembled each one bewildered to hear these men speaking in his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each one of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, Jews and 
proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. The Word of the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your riches. You take back your spirits, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You set forth your spirits, they were created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I find my joy in the Lord. The Sequence Holy Spirit, Lord of life, from the clear celestial height, thy pure beaming radiance give. Come, thou Father of the poor, come with treasures which endure, come, thou light of all that live. Thou of all consolers best, thou the soul's delightful guest, dost refreshing peace bestow. Thou in toil art comfort sweet, pleasant coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. Light immortal, light divine, visit thou these hearts of thine, and our inmost being fill. If thou take thy grace away, nothing pure in man will stay, all his good is turned to ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, on our dryness pour thy dew, wash the stains of guilt away. Bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill, guide the steps that go astray. Thou on us who evermore thee confess and thee adore, with thy sevenfold gifts descend. Give us comfort when we die. Give us life with thee on high. Give us joys that never end. Alleluia, alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you. And he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. aren't we when we see somebody on the television who is long since dead making a speech while they were still alive. The person may be dead but their words come alive and I think a good example of that is Martin Luther King way back in 1968 before he was shot. He gave that famous speech, I have a dream. And to a certain extent, that dream came through when President Obama was elected. And a lot of good things, I know there's trouble out there at the moment, but a lot of really good things happened as a result of that speech. 
Well, who brings the words of Jesus? Now, we know Jesus is not dead. He has come back from the dead. But who brings his words alive today? Those same words which he spoke 2,000 years ago. Well, it's the Holy Spirit, of course. Now, in the Mass, shortly, I'll be imposing my hands on the bread and wine. And I implore the Holy Spirit to come down on these offerings so that they will become the body and blood of Christ for us today. So that's bringing the past into the present. The Holy Spirit, I think, will keep us from stagnating spiritually and sort of living in the past. In today's Gospel, Jesus breathed on the Apostles. We often use the same language when things begin to fester. We breathe, we say, new life into a situation. Now, in that beautiful Pentecost hymn, we hear, Breathe on me, breath of God, and fill me with life and you. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, he said last year, and if this is necessary for the Pope, then it's necessary for us as well. He said, I need the constant outpouring of the Holy Spirit if my spiritual life is not to seize up, if it's not to stagnate. Stagnation, I believe, and sin go together. When we talk about growing in the life of the Spirit, it presumes, I think, we're not stuck in the rut of sin, big or small. You're kind of stagnating then, if that's the case. Of course, getting out of the rut of sin can be a big ask for someone who is not open to change, or not open to confess their sins, or not humble enough to do that. For instance, we can be so used to gossiping that it becomes part of who we are, part of our very personality. It doesn't trouble us anymore. But the Holy Spirit keeps prompting us and our conscience to change. The coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost was accompanied, if you will notice, from by extraordinary phenomena. The house shook, for instance, and then the tongues of fire came down and settled on each one of them. A true sign of the Spirit's anointing may not be in phenomena like that at all, but it's when we come to a new awareness of God's love for us, when we come to a new awareness of how really much God loves us. But it doesn't end there, because the Holy Spirit, in one of their readings it says, the Holy Spirit pours the love of God into our hearts. But as I said, it doesn't end there. That same love has to go into our hands and our feet and be lived out in the nitty-gritty of everyday life. This applies, I believe, to everyone in the Church. I don't know whether you heard of Cardinal Soonans. He was a very charismatic figure, I would say, in the 1970s. And he wrote a book called, entitled, your God. And this is what he says about the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, that is, if we keep the Holy Spirit at bay, God tends to be distant. Christ stays in the past. The Gospel is a dead letter. The Church is just another institution. The Mass becomes tiresome, and morality is a slavish adherence to rules and regulations. But everything changes with the Holy Spirit. Christ is in the present. 
The gospel comes alive in ways that I hadn't experienced before. The church is a faith-filled community, not just another association. With the Holy Spirit, living a moral life is about being inwardly transformed, not outwardly, slavishly keeping rules. With the Holy Spirit, my life is characterized by inner peace, even in the midst of turmoil. With this in mind, we pray all the more earnestly. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your divine love. Send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Let us place our needs before God, our Father. We pray for the Church. Inspired by the Holy Spirit, may there be a renewed zeal among Catholics to deepen their faith and a greater earnestness to bear witness to it in the world today. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the renewal of family life. May we learn from present pandemic and cherish each member of our families, especially the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life, especially in the Diocese of Hallam, whose founding we celebrate in this Mass. May those called hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and respond to it with love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for families who have lost members during the present pandemic. May they be comforted in their grief. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the recently deceased, especially Gertie Murphy, and those whose anniversaries we recall today and during the coming week. May they inherit the eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. We now pray to Mary, who was present at the first Pentecost. We'll say the Regina Chaney instead of the Hail Mary. O Queen of Heaven, rejoice, Alleluia, for he whom you did merit to bear, Alleluia, he has risen as he said, Alleluia. Pray for us to God, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia, for the Lord has truly risen, Alleluia. We now pause and pray for intentions of our own. Prayer for those affected with COVID-19. Merciful God, come to the help of your people. Be our shelter in this time of peril and strengthen the bonds of our community. Bring healing to all who suffer the ravages of disease and assist those whose skill and art can put an end to this affliction. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those who made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all people knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring heart the fullness of charity 
together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray to God our Father with the words which Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke of the marvels of God. Alleluia. Spiritual Communion Prayer My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to have you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as having already come, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never let me be separated from you. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you all, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.